Well, hey, Lighthouse, I, I just want to take a little time with the last few verses of Daniel chapter 4. As we leave Nebuchadnezzar, we leave his, his experience where he saw a dream that he would lose everything and lose everything he does. He comes back to his senses, praising God, acknowledging that God's kingdom is better than his, is eternal. And there's just a couple verses left in the chapter. And could we just spend just a couple minutes today acknowledging what Nebuchadnezzar acknowledges? Won't it be amazing of all the people in the scriptures that will most likely be in heaven that we will get to talk to? Nebuchadnezzar is one of the most interesting. Nebuchadnezzar is one of those that you think, oh, if God could save him a despot, uh, a you know, erecting statues to himself and to his gods and th murdering people who don't worship the way he thinks they should worship. And, and, um, and then God can even get his attention and it gives me hope for anyone in the world. But if we could just listen to the last couple of things that Nebuchadnezzar says about God and acknowledge who God is. At the same time, my reason returned to me as Nebuchadnezzar comes out of his time eating grass like an ox. My reason returned to me and for the glory uh, of my kingdom, my majesty and splendor returned to me too. So he was not only restored to his mind, but he was restored to his position. My counselors and my lords uh, sought me and I established uh, and I was established in my kingdom and still more greatness was added to me. So. You know what? One of the things that strikes me about that statement is that he needed humility. Um, he needed to acknowledge who God was, but you can do that at any strata of life. He did not need to be a poor man in order to have humility. Um, God has his attention and God returns him to his position of power, of greatness, but with a different kind of heart. And, you know, no matter where we are in the socioeconomic strata of life, it's humility that we need. And in fact, we, we need, wouldn't it be wonderful if there were people from the highest, most powerful people to the lowliest people, all who had this humility of heart, who acknowledged God for being who he is. And so maybe more than, than just even thinking about how, um, how other people need to be different, how, how we need to be. We wish we were higher on the scale. Maybe we should be lower on the scale. Instead, just acknowledge that God needs to get our attention, can get our attention anywhere we are in society, and that it's our heart that matters. So God returns Nebuchadnezzar to his place. Still more greatness was added to me, Nebuchadnezzar says. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, again, this is his personal, personal testimony. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. Nebuchadnezzar praised God. Man, today, would you praise God? Not just to know that he's God and that you're not, and not just know that Jesus is risen and all of that stuff, but would you spend time praising God today? You're going to praise something. We're built to worship. That's, all, that's what we do all the time. Would you praise God today? Not yourself, not your family, not your career, but would you be someone whose praise goes to God today? I praise and extol and honor the King of heaven. Would you honor God today? Nebuchadnezzar had to go through a terrible experience. God had to really get his attention in painful ways for him to get there. Are you going to need that too? Or are you going to today, right, as you are where you are, live a life that honors God? What kind of a life honors God? Well, a life of honesty, a life of integrity, a life of kindness, a life of gentleness, a life of self-control. A life that reflects the grace of God to the world. A life that reflects the mercy of God to the world. A reflect a life that, that reflects God's character, that people might look at us and know what God is like, that God would look at his kids, me and you, that God would look at us and say, man, they really honor me. Man, 
Nebuchadnezzar was so humbled that even though he's back to being the king of Babylon, he doesn't want to honor himself, but he honors the Lord of heaven. For all his works are right and his ways are just and those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. Nebuchadnezzar comes to the understanding that God's works are right. That that what defines rightness is what God does. And not only that, but God's ways are right and uh, or his works are right and his ways are just. And you look around and go, if God is just, why is the world so broken? Why is there so much injustice? Well, because God is just, but people aren't. So instead of accusing God of injustice, we need to be sure that we reflect God's justice to the world. That we make sure as far as it depends on us with how we spend our time, how we give our attention, how we spend our money, how we exist in the world, that it's a just world, that people are treated fairly, that there's kindness to every human because that's what God's like. Those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. Nobody knew that better than Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar absolutely walked in pride and he knows for sure that God can humble anyone. Isn't it an interesting thing that today we would say, God, would you make my heart like Nebuchadnezzar's? Would you make my heart such that I praise you easily all day long, that I extol and honor you with the kind of life that I live, that I recognize your rightness in the world and that I recognize your justice and I live to reflect that to people. All right. Be loved, Lighthouse.